Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Comedy History 101. I am Harmon, and we are bringing you a brand spanking new episode today on the history of slipping on a banana peel. We've seen that happen. It's funny, right? Isn't it? What kind of shoes would you make out of bananas? Slippers? We know the joke. Before we jump into the episode, hey everyone, take some time to subscribe, rate, and like us on iTunes. Just do it. That's all we really ask. And without further ado... You're stupid. Everybody so stupid. Good thing about doing comedy in Russia, you have captured the audience. You're stupid. Everybody so stupid. Comedy History 101. So Woody Allen here is unzipping a giant banana. Yep. Here comes a man. And he's angry. He is about to run away with said banana. Yeah. He is slipping on gigantic banana peel. They sped up the footage a bit. Um, and then I think he goes on to other fruits and vegetables. Yeah, there's so, a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. There. yeah. Yeah, so uh, what you just heard there was a clip from the classic Woody Allen movie, Sleeper, in which Woody Allen is trying to steal a giant banana uh, and unsuccessfully does so because he keeps slipping on the gigantic banana peel. Mm. And yes, 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 indeed, you've tuned into another episode of Comedy History 101. Where we school you in comedy. I, of course, am Harmon Leon. We have been off for a while. With me, of course, Scott Kalonico. Scott, how, how have you been enjoying your time off from Comedy hey, History 101? It was good. I, I'm doing really well. Whoa, Harmon, I slipped. You slipped on what? A banana peel. Man, Whoa. they're slippery. Yeah, uh, yeah because uh, 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 banana peels are a comedy. It's Would you call it a comedy trope? It's a comedy trope. So. Yeah, the kids like using the word trope. Uh, I'll go along with the kids. Oh, first of all, Scott, two first. Uh, uh, first, this is the first time we've had a two-year anniversary of our podcast, Comedy History Oh, my God, the first, our first ever two-year anniversary. Actually, I think we're a little bit over it, maybe. Like, But we've been off for a while, so I, okay. I do believe... So, firmly, we've been going two years strong. Wow. Two years strong, man. It's almost like yesterday when we started. Yeah, it was almost like two years ago when we started. Yeah. <laughs> it almost seems like yesterday. Second yeah. second thing, uh, this is the first, is this is the first time that this was um, this episode on the history of slipping on banana peels is actually a request by one of our listeners. Oh, really? Who was that? Uh, uh, okay, a, a listener in Minneapolis, Minnesota, who goes by the name Shane Schmidt. Uh, he, he, I'll, I'll, paraphrase, I'll paraphrase his request. He said, okay. uh, Scott Harmon, I am a huge <laughs> fan of your podcast. Oh, man, a huge good. fan. But I've been wondering, could you possibly do an episode on... The history of slipping on a banana peel. Well, Shane, well, yep. <laughs> your wishes come true because oh my this, God, this so is like we're giving out wishes. <laughs> we're like Oprah now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Scott, guess what this episode's on? Uh, slipping on banana. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. The, the it's on the history of slipping on a banana peel. And you too. Uh, and just by as a little footnote, uh, you too, the other listeners of our podcast. If you have a request for a future episode that we should dive into, how how can they contact us, Scott? Well, Harmon, you know they can go to our website, which is you know. Obviously enough, entitled uh, ComedyHistory101.com. You can go right there. You can drop us an email. There's a little email button. We've actually been getting quite a few emails lately, so that's pretty cool. Um, you can also tweet out to us. And this is a little trickier, right, mm. Armin? Uh, tweet, yeah, you got to put, like, hashtags and at symbols. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah but we're ComHist101. Is that correct? 
Uh, you, that is correct. Exactly. Okay. All right. Cool. That's what we are. It's a little because comedy history on one was too long, too long to fit into Twitter. We're also on Instagram and Facebook. So why don't you come over and friend us if you're out there and want to keep in touch with the latest comedy stylings of comedy history one on one. Exactly. So Scott, I'm going to put a scenario out to you. Okay. Let's okay. say it's it's the early 20th century, uh-huh. and uh, you are you you Scott Colonico, earliest 20th century version of you. You're you're going to the vaudeville house for a good okay. evening of vaudevillian comedy. Hey, I'm a Grandpa Colonico. <laughs> I'm a going to the watch a show. <laughs> I just got off the boat from a Napoli. Yeah, so you go, and on stage is a vaudevillian comedian. He pulls out a particular type of fruit, and 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 what is that tip, typical kind of fruit, and what does he do with it? Well, um, <laughs> let's see. Let me take a stab here. I believe, I would guess that would be a banana, and what he would do would be to peel the banana, eat the banana, and then discard the banana peel uh, in the street. That's right. It's right. Um, and, and we, the audience, laugh. And you know why we laugh, Scott? Because we are exhibiting, uh, and you live, in, you live in Berlin, we are exhibiting what? Shall we say it on three? One, One two, two, three. three. Schweizen. <laughs> yeah. Schrodenschaden. Yeah. yeah. So we are laughing at the misfortune of others. And in fact, uh, Mel Brooks kind of summed up uh, the, the whole comedy theory behind laughing at someone slipping on a banana peel, which is tragedy is when I get a hangnail. Comedy is when someone else falls into an open sewer and dies. Oh, Mel Brooks. Ooh, took a dark turn there. <laughs> yeah, and that's actually the actual, uh, if I get close to the pronunciation, it's schadenfreude, and that's when you take joy in the misery of others, or mm-hmm. in the misfortune of others, yeah. That's right. Do you know, and I, and I, and I, and I sense that's a whole comedy episode in itself, the that's history true, yeah, of how that word true. came about uh, that I can't pronounce well, but uh, the history of laughing at the misfortune of others. But I guess this episode is a subsect of that. So, Scott, mm-hmm. there's a crazy origin story on uh, first um, why comedians of old timey comedians with their old timey mustaches. You know, moving in fast motion in their silent movies, <laughs> um, started uh, uh, using um, slipping on a banana peel as a trope. Um, oddly enough, you know, bananas weren't were like back in like 1876 were considered an exotic fruit. It's like, okay, let's say it's the 1896 Philadelphia World Fair, and right. that's where sort of bananas uh, first were introduced to the United States. They were considered a, de- a delicacy. And they sold in old timey money for ten cents a piece. Oh man! Okay. Do, right. do, do, do you have the calculator to figure out how I much don't. that? I do not. Yeah, that's. Uh, <laughs> I don't either. But I'm going to take a stab. That's going to be roughly one hundred dollars a. Yeah, banana. that's going to be like that. You have to open a <laughs> bank account to buy a banana. I think. No, it's probably but like equivalent of maybe like five dollars or something. I don't know. That's a we're not that specialist of a podcast. But they they were so exotic. They were served wrapped in tin foil and eaten. How Scott with a knife uh, t- and a fork. Tin foil. Hold on, I started going down the uh, the yeah. Go ahead. One dollar. I got it. I have the answer. So one dollar in eighteen eighty five. Ten cents. Our, uh, oh, oh, ten cents. So ten cents in eighteen eighty five. Would be worth, yeah, approximately about five bucks. Yeah, for one banana. One banana. That's pretty expensive. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, again, on another podcast, I believe, what, oh, what podcast was it? I can't remember. Maybe Backstory. That people would actually come up to the banana plant and actually poke it. Because it was like, they just didn't know what it was. So it was like a big <laughs> hit of the yeah. 1876 uh, Philadelphia World Fair. Yeah, but, yeah. but things changed with the banana. Uh, and we have to do a little backstory into the history of the banana to make you understand, you know, why it became a comedy trope as it is. And I do believe I will probably use the word trope in this podcast. I I think a good twenty to twenty five times. Uh, yeah, you want to you want to keep you know, count? <laughs> no, I think we'll let our listeners do that. And I guess whoever who whoever sends it in, they'll they'll win a copy of your latest book. 
Oh, that's right. The one that's coming out in July, Tribe Spotting, uh, Undercover yeah. uh, Culture Stories. Yeah, right. available on Amazon. Pre-order today. <laughs> <laughs> so so it wasn't until like uh, shortly after the United Fruit Company uh, sort of colonized uh, South and Central America region, uh, you know, uh, by importing uh, bananas to the United States and thus the term uh, Banana Republic. Uh, do you know the origin of? Did you know that was the origin of a uh, banana public, where where a region is very dependent on one resource, and in this term, it was bananas. It was uh, importing bananas to the United States was keeping a lot of these uh, regions sort of going. Or, or in some cases, if <laughs> the region wasn't performing as we thought they would, we would kind of install our own government in there. That's kind of also what the, it kind of means, a corrupt, corrupt government, yeah. Ah, and which they could hear about more on our other podcast, This is the President, our political That's right. podcast. That's right. A- available, a- available on iTunes. Everywhere. Subscribe today. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so so United Fruit Company uh, popularized the banana in the United States, and no longer were people buying them for 10 cents a piece. And eating them wrapped in tin foil and with a knife and fork. Uh uh-uh. uh. No, no. <laughs> and they, they became like kind of like, okay, so um, in hipster terms, uh, back in the day, they became, uh, uh, bananas became a popular street food. Oh man, street street bananas. <laughs> They're kind of like the Detroit style pizza of the 1850s, huh? Oh, it? don't don't mock Destroy. I, Destroy style pizza is actually really good. I like it. Dude. I love. I yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome, uh, on d- different crust, interesting yeah. crust. Uh, yeah, very crunchy. Mm-hmm. So they became a popular street food. You know, probably served in uh, hor- You know, instead of like you know uh, street food trucks, do they probably just have like horse drawn carriage? Chipsters were selling the yeah. bananas with twir- with twirly mustaches. The twirly mustaches remains to this day. Yeah, yeah. So in the early uh, 19th century, a man named Carl B. Frank began importing Panamanian bananas to New York, and it quickly caught on. And okay, so these are cheap. We like these bananas. And what would people do with their banana peels? For God's sake, Scott. They would just throw them into the street, Harmon. If you could believe it, a banana peel in the street. Yeah, and so, you know, you might not think one banana peel, that's going to cause people to slip, but these are like bananas that were like rotting away in the New York summer sun. Uh, They were slime covered and they became a potential and often fatal booby trap. Yeah, and you know what, uh, Harmon, I was reading, a lot of these cities, they would just kind of have, they would turn pigs loose in the street to go around and eat all the uh, garbage that was kind of like their their early sanitation back in the day. Oh, I didn't know that Trump had relatives back then. Ha 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 ha. Oh yeah, don't don't get too political. Don't get this is the apolitical <laughs> podcast. <laughs> this is call me family friendly, you know. Yeah, so anyways, um we have a bunch of articles here that were written back in the day that kind of uh, 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 spelled out the foibles of, of having these banana peels uh, in the street. Uh, the first earliest reference was in 1854 in the, do you know how to pronounce this? The Thibodeau Minerva. I think that's like a, a newspaper in Louisiana. Uh, Thibodeau, yeah. Thibodeau Minerva, Louisiana paper. Yeah, yeah. So they actually... Uh, Tend a joke if you step on a piece of banana peel and slip and dislocate your ankle in front of a doctor's office. Don't entertain the idea that the MD put it there in hopes that someone would break his limbs and give him a job. Scooby doo ba ba ba. I don't know whatever the catchphrase. Re- it needs need to be more in old timey voices, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Do uh, you want to take the next one? Like this is the a Passover service. And, well, uh, <laughs> this is. Um, uh, and so, for example, Harmon, to see to show you how prevalent and how far back this goes, back in mm. 1861, children were being, that's like right when the Civil War started, children ah, were yeah. being warned in a Sunday school paper against throwing their banana, banana on a sidewalk. And in this Sunday school paper, it told the door, it told the dire story about a man who slipped on a banana peel, broke his leg, had to have it amputated, lost his job, and wound up in the poorhouse with his wife and children. The story concludes with this line. Now I'll do an old-timey voice. Yeah. <clears throat> now you wonder why I don't, 
Now you wonder why I say don't throw orange or banana peel on the sidewalk? Oh, that's, yeah, that was more yeah. like a Teddy Roosevelt. So this is 1861. Really, was that going maybe, into like 1910, maybe? It but, was very uh, uh, <laughs> Roosevelian. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Right. But um, but we the point made is like, um, right. basically, if you, you slip on a banana peel, um, you'll end up in the poorhouse. Right, yeah, it's horrible, dude. Yeah, so in 1880, Harper's Weekly um, also jumped in and published a kind of, they attributed slipping on banana peels to uh, xenophobia. Whoa. Yeah. What? (laughs) But yeah, so instead of saying uh, build that wall about uh, immigrants, um, Harper's Weekly in 1880 published a cartoon in which the first panel labeled cause in parentheses, showed an Irishman munching on a banana and discarding the peel on the sidewalk. And in front of him is a top-hatted cane-twilling gentleman. Think of the guy on the Monopoly board. And the second panel labeled a fact. The gentleman is being carried away on a stretcher. Now, I was trying to find out some kind of reference for this. Like I want to know like how we could tell he was an Irish guy. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, they hated Irish people back in the right. days, you Both, know, before yeah. like, you know, Trump said, uh, you know, our immigrant hate should be steered at brown people. Um, right. um, look at history um, in the 1800s. It was it was that kind of uh, xenophobic anger was centered at the Irish. Yeah. No Irish need apply. Exactly. Exactly. So, uh, again, it was like a a, a, a racist a xenophobic sort of uh, uh, slant uh, against the Irish. Mm, oh boy, okay. Well, um, these, I mean, they're not just that funny, Harmon, because they're also kind of deadly. I mean, maybe you're, this happened in your neck of the woods, so I'm thinking that maybe you could do some research on this. But, but, but um, you mean, but uh, oh, unless you think Fratischoisen, <laughs> deadly Fratischoisen is funny. <laughs> no, no, I'm just saying. No, go no, ahead. This is an accident that happened in Brooklyn, Brooklyn, New York. Are you ready for this? I live in Brooklyn, New York. Yeah, so listen to this. Yeah. The, Washington, the Washington Times reported that on November 1st, 1917, Jacob Bopp, a chauffeur of Brooklyn, slipped on a banana peel and died within a few minutes of a fracture of the skull. Ooh. Yeah. So I mean, that's not, you know, it's no laughing matter. Yeah, and it goes on and on. 1902, St. Louis City Council outlawed throwing or casting banana rinds on public thoroughways. Um, yeah, we already got this one. So to combat it, like uh, you mentioned, Scott, they would put wild pigs roaming wild pigs. the streets. <laughs> but soon, which would present the problem of hiding your children from the wild pigs roaming the streets. <laughs> yeah, it's turned into a problem. It's like the warriors, but with pigs. Yeah, and so according to the book, and this is actually a book, Banana, um, uh, semicolon, The Fate of Fruit That Changed the World by Dan Koppel, uh, the banana epidemic in New York City was solved by a public agency headed by a former Civil, well, Civil War colonel uh, who organized a fleet of uniform workers known as the White Wings to sweep the streets of New York. Oh, man. Hey, Harmon, before we get into the world of comedy, um, being that I am here in Berlin and in East Mm -hmm. Berlin, they kind of have a history with a banana. They're, like, very big into banana juice here. Yeah. Banana juice? Okay. Yeah, banana juice is good. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I've got a a Cold War joke for you about bananas. Who's there? No, no. Okay, okay. Oh, that's our our last episode on the history of the knock-knock joke. Yeah. Uh, which, uh, by the way, I uh, check out on iTunes. Uh, spoiler alert. Uh, oh, no, that's the history of uh, why okay. the chicken crossed the road. Yeah, um, that, yeah anyways, yeah. <laughs> so go ahead or keep it how, in. How do, you, how do you, yeah. in Berlin, how do you tell which way is east? Um, by the way, your banana's pointed? <laughs> you put a banana on top of the wall wherever the banana disappears to. That's east. Ah. That's kind of joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, okay, all right, all right. Not applicable now. Nope, not at all. You put you put a banana on top of the wall, and whatever way David Hasselhoff eats it when he's tearing <laughs> down the wall the, and opening up the, freedom, the German people. that's, yes. yeah. <laughs> what was the song he sang up there? Freedom. It was called Freedom? I think so, yeah. 
Oh, all right. David Hasselhoff. <laughs> yeah. Haven't heard from him for a while. <laughs> no, he's kind of busy doing stuff. So anyway, Scott, we have this history leading up to just sort of the uh, uh, cultural climate and, and, and are centered around uh, the banana. But um, in the early 1900s, the banana peel um, entered the world of comedy. And I know okay. the listeners were thinking, well, how? thank God. No, how? Yeah. And thank God this, uh, this is a comedy history podcast. Thank God you're putting a correlation and tie into the world of comedy of this topic so far. <laughs> hey, so, Harmon. Yeah, Scott, go ahead. I, do, I have an update. I have an update on mm. the um, on the price of a banana. Yes. So 10 cents in 1886 is actually uh, $2.70 in 2019. Oh, yeah, but still expensive for yeah, a, expensive maybe, for a banana. Yeah, maybe they were factoring in the cost of the knife and fork and tinfoil, <laughs> which tin they had to wrap was, it in. Yeah, because tinfoil was probably expensive back then. Yeah, or, uh, you know, just being there was still a British influence, maybe it was aluminum foil. Aluminum foil. (laughs) Continue. So, Scott, in the 20th century... The banana enters vaudeville. Hey, we're in the 20th century. Why, I oughta... So slipping and falling gags in vaudeville uh, became, uh, you know, widely popular. You know, I, you know, I guess, you know, it's the origins of slapstick, which later, uh, you know, resonated. Well, we'll talk to about later resonated, but, you know, in the movies of Max Sennett into uh, slapstick. So um, vaudevillian comedians would adopt on stage slipping on a banana peel. But they actually said there was a there's actually a theory uh, behind that. I I read two stories. One said this this story isn't true. The other said uh, didn't do any fact checking and said it was true that uh, slipping on a banana peel, like if you're doing a vaudeville skit and you're on the city streets, it was actually a replacement for uh, dog poop on stage. So yeah. when you have a you know comedian slipping on a banana peel, you couldn't really you know manifest our you know, from a large theater of slipping on uh, dog poop on stage. Yeah. So thus, a brightly colored banana peel took the place of dog shit. Yeah. I so there. <laughs> you don't buy that theory? No. <laughs> it could be, could be not. It could be there was another uh, branch of vaudevillian comedians that also did that. Yeah, no, I'm skeptical. Like uh, dog shit uh, Smithers <laughs> what, no, <laughs> from, the, from the old music hall days. Right. Oh, okay. But Scott, there was actually one comedian who became the most famous vaudevillian comedian uh, who who slipped on banana peels. And I, I, I've, I've, I've seen a poster of him. He was okay. called Sliding Billy Watson. Wow, okay, all right. And not to be confused with another competing vaudevillian who was named Billy Beef Trust Watson. Wow. Okay. <laughs> but sliding uh, Billy Watson, I, I don't know if he was, uh, 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 you know, uh, the inventor of sleeping on the banana peel pratfall, but uh, he's credited for it, and he became the first uh, uh, famous comedian known for slipping on a banana peel in the vaudeville days. And he was sometimes, okay. uh, be- because of his slipping on the banana peel, was nicknamed the Flying Dutchman. Oh, dear, okay. Was he Dutch, though? Do we know that? Uh, Watson really kind of not a very Doesn't Dutch. Doesn't sound name. that Dutch, yeah. Yeah, pretty kind of knows. English. Yeah. So yeah, so his stick was uh, he would you know present a scene of a man struggling to maintain his balance after slipping on a banana peel. Uh, this inspired sliding act brought him great fame in the 1900s. Mm, good for him. Yeah. Anything you want to interject on uh, sliding Billy well, he Watson? Did have a, he did. He did have a funny story. Um, he had a quote that he said. Um, I'll try to do my old timey voice again. <clears throat> yeah. Believe me, he said, I never go past a banana peel on the sidewalk now without being inclined to take off my hat and bow to it in a spirit of reverence. 
Yeah, but he's probably saying that because he kind of made his mark by yeah. being known as the guy who slips on the uh, banana, the banana peel. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so he wasn't the only uh, vaudevillian comedian, uh, you know, incorporating the banana peel in his act. Obviously, um, there was another vaudevillian comedian named Cal Stewart who incorporated a ton of banana peel jokes into his act uh, routine as a character called Uncle Josh. Uncle Josh, okay. But by 1909, even before, uh, you know, uh, the banana peel gag made its way into cinema, uh, Variety wrote a story uh, called How Jokes Are Made and declared that the banana peel slipping gag was already hack. Yeah, you know what you know what they wrote, Harmon? Uh, please do tell. <laughs> I don't have to read it in old timey voice. It's like old timey reporter. How about how about a future yeah. robot voice? No, no, no. <laughs> those two, that's, the slip that's, that's, that's gonna blow everyone's minds. No, but yeah. what a Variety wrote was that um, in 1909 again to remind everyone. Uh, quote to Variety. Quote. The slipping on a banana, banana peel episode has now been so done to death by the funny papers that it is now tabooed now entirely as too old. And that's in 1909. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's like uh, one of the articles we read, there was a series of like kind of one panel cartoons uh, involving, you know, people that sort of look like Mutt and Jeff. Uh, oh, old timey man, cartoon Jeff, characters <laughs> slipping on banana peels with you know a one panel sort of gag. Yeah, but like anything that's hack, the movies were soon awaiting. Oh Ooh. my god! Okay, yeah. Do you like that do you like that, that that teaser into? I would say that we're rounding into Act Three of our uh, yeah. <laughs> story of the the history of the banana peel. So um, I was reading this. Okay, first of all, Scott. I'm going to say our readers are going to have to write a lot of angry letters and emails to Mental Floss. Why is that? Well, so I was reading this Mental Floss article on the history of slipping on a banana peel, and uh-huh. they said, Mental Floss, that the gag first appeared in the Harold Lloyd silent comedy, 1917 silent comedy, The Flirt. Where Harold right. Lloyd is sitting in a restaurant, his character is diligently peeling a banana, he tosses it on the floor, and a snooty waiter walks by and slips and drops his tray, and humor ensues. Right. Sorry, mental floss, not true. Wrong, wrong. <laughs> in, in, in 1905, the, 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 the gag was first sort of... Uh, Uh, Captured on film when Crescent Film Company released a series of everyday scenes, including one called What a Banana Peel Would Do, 1905. That's not 1917. No, that's 10 years, 12 years before. That's right. So that's 12 years of slipping on banana peels captured on cinema. Uh, just to, to, to keep along, let's go move forward just a couple of years to 1914, which is still before 1917 Mental Floss. Mm. Um, there's a, uh, an article in the Moving Picture World um, trade magazine or magazine um, quoted saying that as a uh, creation of comic types in the life and the making of situations with drows laughter <laughs> without the fin- fatal banana peel and the seltzer bottle marked the coming of new kinds of comic film. So here we have 1914, which is that before 1917, Harmon? Would that be correct? Um, yeah, I think that's three years before right. Mental Floss said the first gag was captured in cinema. And then to put one more nail in the, the coffin of Mental Floss magazine. Um, also two, 19- two more. There's two more. Two more. Two more. Yeah. Okay, two, two more nails. More. 19, <laughs> one more. First nail. Uh, 1914 film. Called uh, Fatty and the Shyster Lawyer. Okay, um, first yeah, of all, no. let's let's <laughs> let's let's uh, can we put a full stop right here, a full halt, full yeah. stop. I mean, period. Yes. I'm doing the English full full stop. Uh, yeah. What do you think? There's some <laughs> ethnic stereotypes there going might, on in Fatty might. and the <laughs> Shyster Lawyer. Yeah. Also, also body shaming, dude. It's not being body positive if they call him this guy Fatty. And also, uh, the star of Fatty and the Shyster Lawyer was not a uh, silent film star and soon to be disgraced silent film star Fatty Arbuckle. No, oh, it was this was. Else? Yeah, it's a different Fatty. Oh wow. 
Okay. Yeah. Like, and, so just in summer across the board. Yeah, and uh, I don't. I can almost picture how they would depict the shyster lawyer, <laughs> and it's yeah. not good at all. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> so let's move on to something good. But I do yeah, like the yeah. But the, the the premise of that, uh, yeah. which is pre, was Fatty slips on a banana peel, awaiting for a streetcar, uh, and then rival lawyers sent business. Yeah, so that and the, the name nail name of that firm is Steel and Gouge, which is which is nice. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, just and then here was the first thing I came across when researching this to put the final nail in Mental Floss's uh, coffin. Um, 1915, Charlie Chaplin. You know, so th- we we haven't heard of those other movies, but in 1915, Charlie Chaplin had a silent movie called By the Sea. Uh, in which he has a great um, slipping on a banana peel gag. He eats the banana, he tosses it over his shoulder, he goes to walk away, he slips. Two yeah, two years then, before Mental Floss years. said, Harold Lloyd's first the flip. Oh, oh Mental Floss, you're going to get so many angry letters from our oh, listeners. Oh, yeah. By, by, by the time that Mental Floss said the first comedy gag of uh, slipping on a banana peel took place, you know, it was already sort of hack. I'm already tired of it. So, yeah, again, it became like a, a, a well-known trope in the silent comedy world. Buster Keaton heightened the gag. And this is actually a very funny clip. And this actually shows it was kind of hack. In, in his film High Sign in 1921, um, Buster Keaton is walking down the street. Um, he sees a banana peel. He walks over it and he doesn't uh, slip. And he makes a funny, I, I think it was like some sort of like funny high sign, you yeah. know, kind of like to the, what, what, the camera. Yeah. Yeah. What, what does that mean? That high sign? It's kind of like, uh, uh, just like, ah, I got you. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of like I got you sort of sign. Yeah. So he does that after walking over a banana peel, not seeing the second banana peel, which he slips on. Yeah. That's, so there you go. So it's kind of in meta. Yeah, 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 it's good. And it, earlier in that, it's actually kind of a funny thing where uh, Buster Keaton, uh, there's a police officer on the corner, and he takes his, and first of all, you couldn't do this. Tell me how many ways, you, what would happen if he, Buster Keaton did this in 2019. Um, he sees a police officer, he takes the gun out of his holster and replaces it with a banana. What would happen to what? Buster Keaton if he did that in no, 2019? I He'd be going to jail. He'd be shot, man. No, he'd be shot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so then, then uh, the the police officer later seen and why there's a banana peel on the sidewalk is um, there's a there's a, a a crook, a no good neck looking type. So the police officer pulls out his what he thinks is his gun, oh, and it's the banana. And and the 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 no good neck takes the banana and eats it. In oh, front of man. the cop, and then tosses the banana peel on the sidewalk, which later Buster Keaton encounters. Oh, so but the the cop, the the crook, the no good Nick doesn't slip on it. No, no, but Buster Keaton, he walks over, it gives the high sign, then slips on the other one. Okay, all right. Yeah, and later, you know, he in 1928 in his movie The Cameraman, he Buster Keaton does another, uh, you know. Slip on the banana peel again. I don't know what we have with that. In 1926, though, Harold Lloyd did a great take on slipping on the banana peel. Again, it's like a, a comedy trope. So it's like these great comedians of the time, you know, like Buster Keaton, Harold Lloyd, and Charlie Chaplin, they would try to reinvent the slipping on a banana peel gag. So this one has hanging from a, a bus. Uh, you know, doing an acrobatic sort of stunt hanging from the bus, and he actually slips on a banana peel that's on the hood of the bus while it's 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 moving. It's kind of like he's kind of like the the Jackie Chan of his time. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. I've seen that clip. But do you, do you see um, Laurel and Hardy in the 1927 uh, uh, film Battle of the Century? Well, in that case, Harmon, the uh, banana peel trick is just the impetus for. As you would assume from the title, there is a big battle, but because it's Laurel and Hardy, it is a it's a pie fight. It's a pie fight battle. Yeah, so basically the gag is a guy who works at a pie shop. He's walking in, he slips on a banana peel that I think Laurel throws on, on the on the sidewalk, 
and but they still have the the actual banana in their hand and they just do a great physical gag of switching off like Hardy <laughs> keeps handing it to Laurel he, he thinks it isn't in his hand it always sort of ends up in uh, Hardy's hand Hal Roach man yeah he fucked over uh, Laurel and Hardy by the way financially basically uh, Hal Roach sort of fucked him over which is uh, yeah. so they had to go on the road like the year before like Hardy died to go yeah. like play music halls in the UK yeah. But it's just, it's yeah, it's just like they were just like completely forgotten in history, yeah. you know, up until yeah. television came about. Right, exactly. Yeah, but they, um, I just uh, wanted to point out, Harmon, that the uh, pie shop, shop in the uh, Laurel and Hardy banana slipping gag uh, movie, uh, it's actually called Ye Old Pie Shop, spelled ah. old timey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, old timey spelling. Um, just another footnote, and again, yes, we will do a history. Yeah, let's do a history of Laurel and Hardy as it parallels, you know, that chapter from the Laurel and Hardy movie. But, uh, you know, interesting tidbit, I, I do believe it's some crazy stat like 65% or over 65% of Laurel and Hardy's movies were silent movies. Really? Okay. Right. Yeah, I mean, we think of them in the modern era, but I, they were just like cranking out those silent movies. You oh, know, yeah, those, you would do like a, a few, like a, in a week. Yeah, the one reelers. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So Scott, it kind of brings us up to uh, what we covered at the top of the show, which is what what year did uh, Woody Allen's Sleeper come out? Uh, that was seventy three. Yeah, which which brings back uh, Woody Allen again. Much like, uh, you know, uh, Buster Keaton and Laurel and Hardy and Harold Lloyd, they were always trying to reinvent a, the comedy trope of slipping on a banana peel. And Woody Allen did just the same. You know, again, Sleeper is like a big homage to silent films because they have those long sequences just set to music. Mm -hmm. And it's just all physical comedy where, um, you know, Woody Allen is thrust into the future and he's trying to steal some organic food of like a banana like twice his size um he unpeels it and he gets chased and he ends up slip, slipping on the giant the gigantic banana peel yeah it's 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 wacky as you would say. yeah anything you've seen in, in in modern history of uh people slipping on banana peels no, I was just trying to In think films? about that. I was trying to think of what other movie that we could have. But maybe, you know what, Harmon? You know who might be able to help us? Ghostbusters? No, our <laughs> listeners. Our listeners. They could, oh, like, how can they do that? <laughs> they could tweet to us. They could email us. They could go to our website and fill in the contact form. If they think of a movie that they there's a banana that we forgot, we'll be sure mm. to mention them on the air. Or we should make the movie uh, a banana which we forgot. <laughs> <laughs> what? That that should be a movie. <laughs> like the movie so, title? Yeah. The banana yeah. which we forgot. A banana too far. Yeah. Right. So Scott, Scott, this yes. whole myth yes. though, this whole myth, why don't why okay, so in the nineteen hundreds it was such a big ordeal of people walking down a city street, slipping on a banana peel. Some of them would end up dying or in the poorhouse, losing all their children. What? Why don't we see in modern day, why don't we see people slipping on banana peels? Well, I mean, it's interesting, Harmon. We got a couple of, um, well, of course, the Mythbuster, Mythbusters guys covered this one back in 2009. Mm -hmm. um, and they decided they did some testings with a number of different uh, banana peels they said they were definitely slippery but mm -hmm. it was kind of hard to just take a bad fall on just a single peel as you would see in some of these movies um they said it's probably not likely to happen by accident mm -hmm. uh, also and one of our other favorite podcasts how stuff works no um, that's they, uh, stuff you should know oh, on the how know. stuff works uh, network but, but we still love <laughs> how stuff works too as well yeah, um, though I don't listen as much as often as right, I used to. Yeah, but no. you know, uh, still but they a good propose podcast. That there's friction between the friction determines the actual likelihood of one slipping on a banana. For example, less friction, but the less friction between a foot and a peel in question, the more one is likely to slip. Mm. So, but the thing they point out is that 
Uh, everybody has like you know the sneakers and the and the tennis shoes and stuff with like anti slip soles kind of mm-hmm. things are basic now. So it's kind of designed with risks like that in mind, so people aren't as likely to slip on a banana peel as like, ah, in the old so, timey days. Yeah, old timey days shoes. when everyone wore flip flops. Flip flops and <laughs> wooden whoa, shoes. my wooden sh- my wooden um, <laughs> Dutch shoes. Whoa. <laughs> no. My leather bottom sole shoes. They're yeah, so yeah. Above with nails in the sole. The but Scott, Scott, the there, there, there is one particular uh, reason why we don't see people on a daily basis slipping on discarded banana peels. Is are you ready for your mind to be blown? Okay, I'm ready. The bananas. Get this. That we eat. Today, are you with me? Are you with me? I'm following. I'm going. Weren't the same bananas as we have today. Whoa. Really? Interesting. And what, what, can you go into that a little bit deeper? Yeah. So, um, and again, I recently heard, maybe I think it was the same podcast I heard on uh, about how this was the big exotic hit at the Philadelphia World Fair. But the bananas we eat today are a variety called Cavendish. But in the 19th century, up until the 1950s, the common variety of bananas that we eat were called Gros Michel or Gros Michael. A sweeter, creamier, and of course, more slippery variety of banana. Ah, okay. All right. So the bananas were slipperier slipperier back in the day. Yeah, yeah. And again, this is like sort of how the... uh, I mean, I, I forgot like the context of this, but it's like sort of when you invest in one particular strand of a uh, horticulture right. uh, and, and a particular disease uh, can come and, and, and wipe out that whole strand, which is the case of what happened in 1950, a devastating strand of, of Panama disease spread through the bed. But the banana plantations of Central and South America almost destroying the Gros Michel variety altogether. Ooh, wow. Uh, uh, growers. Special ha- differentiation. How about that? Yeah. And that. so growers had to switch to the Cavendish variety, oh. which we have today. Almost perhaps a blessing that there's less slipping. So maybe in the Woody Allen, because that was even another 200 years in the future. Mm. You know, maybe he shouldn't have been slipping at all. Yeah, or maybe his shoes weren't. Uh, yeah, maybe he didn't. Modern he had robot shoes, yeah. shoes on. They probably had like they were metal. Yeah. So Scott, any other takeaways from the history of slipping on a banana peel? Um, that's interesting. That that pigs used to roam the streets cleaning up bananas. I didn't know that. <laughs> bananas and other discarded fruit rinds. Yeah. I wonder when, uh, how, how, why they, how that got stopped. What? <laughs> the, the, the pigs. pigs like, yeah. Yeah, suddenly, you know, there had to be a day when there's pigs and then a day when no pigs. Yeah, all of a sudden the pigs stopped. Yeah, that would have been the day the pigs stopped, dude. That was a, that be well, I think it's just like one of those, uh, you know, uh, apples, uh, oranges sort of quandaries with... You know, all the benefits you get from pigs eating discarded food rides is offset by the amount of pig shit on the city streets, <laughs> which yeah, it was like, causes it was like, greater slipping. Yeah, it's like New York, <laughs> apparently like in Manhattan, they used to get all their water, like the drinking water from the city, like in the old timey days from like some right? kind of like swamp that was like on Manhattan somewhere. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, and now we get it from the Pocono Mountains. Why right, our man. water is so good. Tasty. Yeah, so I think, uh, first of all, thank you, our listener, Shane Schmidt, for bringing up, uh, doing an episode on the history of slipping on banana peels. And again... And what, what, do you have, what do you have for Shane? Uh, we have a, a copy of uh, your new movie... <laughs> Sudden Birth, which is being yeah. shown at film festivals around the country as we speak. But how about your book, dude? It's not even, it's more portable. Oh, yeah, we could get Shane a, a copy of my, my new book, which is coming out July 21st, uh, Tribe Spotting, Undercover Culture Stories. Uh, 
for sure. And if you want to suggest an idea and get a copy of my new book, which hasn't even been released yet, you know, once again, drop us a line at ComedyHistory101.com and all the social medias. Are, it's easy to find. And with that, Scott, I think it's time to plug away. All right. Well, thank you, Harmon. As you mentioned, yes, I do have a film that uh, Harmon produced. Uh, I wrote and directed. It's a documentary short entitled Everything You Want to Know About Sudden Birth But We're Afraid to Ask. Um, kind of an oral history of one of the worst police officer training films ever made. Uh, believe it or not, it is funny. Um, but this week, this weekend, actually, we're showing up in your area, Harmon. We're showing at the Montclair International Film Festival over there in New Jersey. Uh, <laughs> next week, we'll be at the Maryland Film Festival and then the Chicago Film Festival and then we're wrapping up the month of May at the Mountain Film Festival out in Telluride, Colorado, with plenty more places after that. Nice, man. They like you in Colorado. That'll be your third showing in, nice. in the Rocky nice. Mountains. Yeah, it was nice. Nice out there. So, uh, uh, pretty cool. And then we just we just got uh, word that we will be showing at the uh, Rooftop Film Festival there in New York City. And I think if people are lucky enough, you might be able to meet Harmon in person. Oh, when is that? Uh, it's not until they don't really have a date yet. It's in the, during the summer sometime. Oh, cool! Yeah, and probably we could give away some tickets or something like that to people who could, comment, yeah. like us, and and and, and uh, uh, subscribe on iTunes. Yep, exactly. And for me, in the immediate future, uh, I have a show this Thursday at the Red Room. Uh, uh, Thursday, May. Ninth, yes, May 9th is this Thursday, 7 p.m. I might show The Moth, a parody show of The Moth. Hey, listeners, you know The Moth. You listen to The Moth Radio Hour. Um, <laughs> my question is, how long do you, can you listen to that without wanting to scrape your own ears out? Well, my show, The Moth, a parody show of The Moth, uh, we, we, we satirize every single aspect that you would see at a typical moth show. So come on down this Thursday to the Red Room above the KGB bar in the Lower East Side and come and see the moth. And with that, I think it wraps up another episode of Comedy History 101. Where we school you in comedy. We will be back on our regular schedule next week with a brand new episode. Thanks a lot for tuning in and bye bye. Bye bye. You're stupid. Everybody so stupid. Good thing about doing comedy in Russia, you have captured the audience. You're stupid. Everybody so stupid. Comedy History 101.